Welcome to Sports Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. I trained in Aston Villa's 115 pounds castor shirt and flooded the gym floor with sweat. FIFA suspended Rubiales to prevent witness tampering in his World Cup kiss case. Don't touch it, Nuggets bring out trophy for media day. Jamal Murray wants another. Lorenzen, Hernandez out for wild card series, Siri, Bush on rosters. Blue Jays unveil playoff roster ahead of wildcard series opener against Twins. I trained in Aston Villa's 115 pounds castor shirt and flooded the gym floor with sweat. Telegraph. Aston Villa's new kit, manufactured by Castor, has been criticized for being uncomfortable and causing excessive sweating when worn during exercise. The shirt is made from synthetic materials and lacks natural fibers, leading to a plastic-like feel. The kit has been ranked poorly in reviews and there are reports suggesting that Aston Villa may terminate their equipment contract with Castor due to the issues with the shirt. FIFA suspended Rubiales to prevent witness tampering in his World Cup kiss case. CBC. FIFA suspended former Spanish soccer president, Luis Rubiales, to block potential witness tampering, according to the governing body's disciplinary committee. Rubiales was removed from his position on August 26 in order to protect an investigation into his conduct at the Women's World Cup final. The provisional ban was imposed particularly so that potential testimonies could be given freely and without any type of pressure, fear or reprisals, said FIFA disciplinary judge Jorge Palacio. Don't touch it, Nuggets bring out trophy for media day. Jamal Murray wants another. The Toronto Star. Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray, NBA champions and teammates on the Denver Nuggets, were reunited with the Larry O'Brien Trophy during a press conference. The trophy had been kept under lock and key by the Nuggets organization since their championship win, preventing players and staff from celebrating with it. This was a departure from recent traditions where NBA championship teams allowed players to take the trophy to their hometowns for celebrations. Murray expressed his desire to bring the trophy to his hometown of Kitchener but was unable to do so. Despite this, Murray remains focused on trying to repeat as champions. Lorenzen, Hernandez out for wild card series, Siri, Bush on rosters. The Toronto Star. Philadelphia Phillies pitcher Michael Lorenzen has been left off the team's roster for the wild card series, despite pitching a no-hitter in August. The 31-year-old right-hander struggled in his next five starts and was dropped from the rotation. Meanwhile, the Texas Rangers have dropped reliever Jonathan Hernandez due to a shoulder injury and included Matt Bush, a former top draft pick who hasn't pitched in the majors since 2018 after being involved in several alcohol-related incidents, an accident, and spending time in prison. Blue Jays unveil playoff roster ahead of wildcard series opener against Twins. The Toronto Star. The Toronto Blue Jays have announced their 26-player roster for the American League wildcard series. The roster includes 14 position players and 12 pitchers. Notable players left off the roster include left-handed starter Hyun Jean Ryu and reliever Bowden Francis. Infielder Davis Schneider and backup outfielder Kim Eden, who have both provided offensive contributions in recent games, have made the roster. The Blue Jays' first game in the series is scheduled for Tuesday against the Minnesota Twins. The winner of the series will move on to the AL Division Series against the Houston Astros. Boy, 11, shoots teenagers after sport practice row. BBC. An 11-year-old boy has been arrested in Florida after shooting two 13-year-olds following an argument at an American football practice. After a physical fight, the boy retrieved a gun from his mother's car and fired a single shot, hitting both victims with the same bullet. The victims were stable after receiving medical treatment, with one requiring surgery. The boy has been charged with attempted second-degree murder. The police chief has criticized the incident, stating that children having access to guns and using them to resolve disputes is a growing problem. It is not known what caused the initial altercation. Former NFL player Russ Francis among two people killed in small plane crash in Lake Placid. The Globe and Mail. Former NFL tight end Russ Francis and aviation safety expert Richard McSpadden were killed in a plane crash in upstate New York on Sunday. Francis, a three-time Pro Bowl selection and Super Bowl winner, was the president of Lake Placid Airways and had been a pilot for nearly 50 years. McSpadden was a senior vice president of the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association and had served as the commander of the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds. The crash is currently under investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board. Our writers pick their England 23s to face Samoa and choose if Ford and Farrell should both start. Telegraph. England's final Rugby World Cup pool match against Samoa offers head coach Steve Borthwick a chance to decide what team to start with for the quarterfinals. 
experts have suggested that the team from the quarterfinals should be played against Samoa and potentially Fiji. The experts have called for George Ford to be benched and for Marcus Smith to be started at fullback, and have suggested that Ford and Owen Farrell should be paired together at 10 and 12. They also recommended that Henry Arundel should be given a chance to prove himself against Samoa, with Manu Tuolaji and Ali Lawrence starting in midfield. Mavs and Timberwolves play in Abu Dhabi as Gulf region's influence with the NBA grows. The Toronto Star. The NBA is becoming increasingly involved in the Arabian Gulf region, with the Dallas Mavericks and Minnesota Timberwolves set to play two preseason games in Abu Dhabi. The move comes as Qatar's Sovereign Wealth Fund purchases a minority stake in the Washington Wizards, less than a year after the NBA Board of Governors allowed institutional investors to become involved. The NBA has signed a multi-year partnership with Abu Dhabi's Department of Culture and Tourism, and the league's Board of Governors has decided to permit passive minority investments in NBA teams by institutional investors. Liverpool receive VAR audio as officials axed from Premier League duty. Telegraph. Liverpool have been given access to the audio recording of the offside goal controversy during their match against Tottenham Hotspur. The head of professional game match officials limited, PGMOL, Howard Webb, has released the audio less than 24 hours after Liverpool formally requested it. The recording is expected to be made public in the coming days. The crisis surrounding the video assistant referee, VAR, system will also see the officials involved in the debacle, Darren England and Dan Cook, excluded from Premier League games this weekend. A review into the incident is ongoing. Tyson Fury vs Francis Ngannou, when is the fight, how to watch an undercard lineup? Telegraph. Tyson Fury has claimed that his exhibition fight against former UFC heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou will be a tougher test than a potential fight against Alexander Yusik. Fury, who holds the WBC heavyweight world title, had been criticized for taking on the exhibition match instead of fighting Yusik. However, a fight between Fury and Yusik is now being planned for either December or January. Fury believes that Ngannou will be a bigger and tougher challenge than other boxers, as Ngannou is more than just a boxer. The fight is set to take place on October 28 in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Telegraph Rugby Podcast J.P. Doyle, do not feel sorry for officials despite Rugby World Cup scrutiny. Telegraph. Former international referee J.P. Doyle believes that rugby referees shouldn't be felt sorry for despite the scrutiny they face during the Rugby World Cup. The introduction of the bunker system has taken some of the pressure off referees by allowing them to refer crucial decisions to a video referee. Doyle, who is now a head coach of match officials at the Scottish Rugby Union, also believes that top referees such as Wayne Barnes, Jocko Paper, and Ben O'Keefe have the experience and ability to deal with different situations correctly. Our experts pick England's all-time ODI 11. Telegraph. England's cricket team for the World Cup has been picked by experts at the Telegraph. The team is a combination of current and past players, with Graham Gooch and Ian Botham selected. The experts picked their teams based on the entertainment factor and not data-led analytics. Ben Stokes was picked as captain, as he is seen as someone who can handle the big personalities in the dressing room. Melinda Rogers Hickson exits Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment Board amid ownership skirmish. The Globe and Mail. Melinda Rogers Hickson, the deputy chair of Rogers Communications, has left the board of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, MLSE, the parent company of the Toronto Maple Leafs and Toronto Raptors, amid a dispute over ownership. Rogers and BCE are challenging MLSE chairman Larry Tannenbaum's plan to raise $400 million by selling a 20% stake in a family-controlled holding company to the Ontario Municipal Employees Retirement System pension plan. The change in the board comes as valuations of sports teams are soaring due to rising revenues from broadcast fees and gambling. Bust of slain commander forces cancellation of soccer match between Iranian and Saudi teams. CNN. A Saudi soccer team, Al Ittihad, withdrew from an Asian Champions League match in Iran due to controversy over a bust of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani at the entrance of the pitch. Soleimani, who was assassinated by the United States in 2020, is revered as a martyr by Iranian hardliners but seen as a terrorist by Saudi Arabia. The incident highlights the continued differences between the two countries despite a recent reconciliation agreement. Soccer has been seen as a bridge builder between the two nations, with hopes of long-lasting peace. Ladies and gentlemen, it's me, the Six Doctor, reporting to you once again from the wacky world of Six Degrees. Today, we've got a juicy lineup of news stories that cover everything from sports controversies to shocking incidents. So, let's dive right in. First up, we have Aston Villa's new kit by Castor. 
apparently, this shirt is causing quite a stir for being uncomfortable and making people sweat like they're in a sauna. I mean, who doesn't love the feeling of plastic against their skin, right? Well, Aston Villa might not be too happy about it, as there are reports suggesting they might cancel their contract with Castor. Maybe they should stick to natural fibers next time. Next, we have FIFA suspending Luis Rubiales, the former Spanish soccer president. But don't worry, it's not because he was caught cheating or anything scandalous like that. No, no, it's just to prevent witness tampering in his World Cup kiss case. Ah, FIFA, always looking out for the little guys. In basketball news, the Denver Nuggets finally let their players touch the Larry O'Brien trophy, but only during a press conference. Talk about teasing. Jamal Murray, one of the players, even expressed his desire to take the trophy to his hometown, but sadly, that dream was shattered. But hey, at least he's focused on trying to win another championship. Gotta respect that dedication. Moving on to baseball, we have some interesting roster decisions. Michael Lorenzen, who pitched a no-hitter in August, has been left off the Philadelphia Phillies roster for the Wild Card Series. Talk about a roller coaster of emotions. And in a surprising move, the Texas Rangers included Matt Bush, who hasn't pitched in the majors since 2018 due to some, uh, off-field incidents. I guess they're willing to give him another shot. Or maybe they just need some excitement in the bullpen. Now, let's talk about the Toronto Blue Jays and their playoff roster. Some notable players were left off, including left-handed starter Hyun Jin Ryu. But fear not, they've got some rising stars like Davis Schneider and Kem Eden making the cut. Who needs experience when you've got fresh talent, right? The Blue Jays are ready to take on the Minnesota Twins in the Wild Card Series, so let's wish them luck. In a shocking and disturbing incident, an 11-year-old boy in Florida shot two teenagers after an argument at a football practice. I mean, I know sports can get intense, but this takes it to a whole new level. The police chief rightly criticized the incident, highlighting the growing problem of children having access to guns. It's a reminder that we need to do better in keeping our communities safe. Moving on to a tragic event, former NFL player Russ Francis and aviation safety expert Richard McSpadden were killed in a plane crash. Francis, a Super Bowl winner, had been a pilot for almost 50 years. It's a sad reminder of the risks involved in aviation, even for experienced pilots. Our thoughts go out to their families and loved ones. Now, let's talk rugby. England's final Rugby World Cup pool match against Samoa is a chance for head coach Steve Borthwick to test out his team for the quarterfinals. The experts are suggesting some interesting lineup changes, like benching George Ford and starting Marcus Smith at fullback. They also want to see a midfield duo of Manu Tuolaji and Ali Lawrence. It's all about finding the winning formula, folks. In NBA news, the league is expanding its presence in the Arabian Gulf region, with preseason games being played in Abu Dhabi. This comes as Qatar's sovereign wealth fund gets involved in team ownership. Looks like the NBA is looking to make some serious moves in the Gulf region. Who knows, maybe we'll see a new team pop up in Dubai one day. Liverpool has received the audio recording of the offside goal controversy during their match against Tottenham Hotspur. The crisis surrounding the VAR system has led to the exclusion of the officials involved in the debacle from Premier League games this weekend. Looks like Liverpool wants to get to the bottom of things, and we might finally get some answers. Let's hope this review leads to some improvements in the VAR system. Now, let's talk boxing. Tyson Fury claims his exhibition fight against Francis Ngannou will be a tougher test than a potential fight against Alexander Yusik. Fury believes that Ngannou's skills go beyond just boxing, making him a more formidable opponent. It's refreshing to see boxers willing to take on different challenges and not just stick to the traditional boxing path. Former international referee J.P. Doyle has some strong words for those who feel sorry for rugby referees facing scrutiny during the Rugby World Cup. With the introduction of the bunker system, referees now have more support in making crucial decisions. Doyle believes that top referees have the experience and ability to handle different situations correctly. So, let's stop feeling sorry for those guys and trust them to do their job. In cricket news, experts at The Telegraph have picked England's all-time ODI 11. The team is a mix of current and past players, chosen for their entertainment factor rather than data-led analytics. Ben Stokes was even picked as the captain, thanks to his ability to handle big personalities in the dressing room. So, it's all about having fun and entertaining the fans. Lastly, there's some drama going on in the world of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, MLSE. Melinda Rogers-Hickson, the deputy chair of Rogers Communications, has left the board amid a dispute over ownership. It seems like everyone wants a piece of the sports team pie, and things are getting heated. Who knew owning sports teams could be so dramatic? 
And that's a wrap, folks. We've covered everything from uncomfortable soccer kits to tragic plane crashes. It's been a wild ride, but it's not over yet. I want to hear from you, my brilliant audience. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any burning questions? I'm here to chat and entertain, so hit me with your best shot. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.